So, um, oh, how many of you have solved these problems or got some idea uh, about the answers? Um, the first one uh, says a uh, discussion exercise practice one. Uh, did you go through the problems? Okay. Um, so let's start with the first one, and uh, this is something uh, which is called order of estimate problems, in which, uh, based on your uh, everyday life experience, you try to make uh, an estimate of the answers to certain statements or problems. Um, for example, the first question is: uh, Joe is 180 centimeter tall. So uh, we are going to guess about this, uh, about the truthfulness of this statement, like whether this statement makes sense or not. And uh, um, usually you do that based on uh, the observation that you have of your everyday world or the, just the general knowledge that you gather from around you. So uh, the statement is that we have the guy Joe and it has a height of 180 centimeters. Is it true or not? It's reasonable, and uh, um, this is called this kind of questions. They generally are called educated guesses because not only you try to answer these questions, you come up with a certain kind of reason to support your answer, like wh why you think this is right or wrong. And if you uh, try to reason for this part of the problem, you see that uh, Joe has a height of 180 centimeter. You can convert these 180 centimeters into um, feet, which is a more reasonable uh, unit to gauge the heights. And you immediately see that one, uh, so we have height of Joe as 180 centimeter. And then we know that one feet, if we convert this into centimeters, this is uh, 30 centimeter. And then you can divide both sides of this equation by 30 so left hand side one feet divided by 30 and the right hand side becomes 30 <coughs> divided by 30 multiplied by centimeter. Now this 30 from the right hand side, it goes away and you get the conversion factor. Like how much one centimeter would be in terms of feet and we can see it's one feet divided by 30. Now we can plug this value of centimeter in here and we get uh, 180 multiplied by one feet divided by 30. That's it, we just plug the value in for centimeters and 180 divided by 30 is six and the units are now feet. And this is almost the average height in of uh, people in the US. Uh, since they talk about Joe's, it's like an average male height, maybe 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 but it's a reasonable guess. If it were even, uh, somewhere in between, let's say five and 6.5, 6.8 feet, it was still a reasonable value to regard it as true. So that's how you guess it, okay? So you just, based on your observations of everyday life and some experience of the values that you get, you make a guess. Um, second one is interesting, let's go through it, and it's like, I rode my bike to campus at a speed of 50 meters per second. So since it uses the word I, so let's say I claim before you guys that this morning I rode my bike at a speed of 50 meters per second while I was coming to campus. Now, since I made this statement in front of you, you are going to judge me based on this statement whether I'm lying or not, like whether this statement is true or not. So I'm claiming that my speed is uh, 50 meters per second. So let me use the symbol V for speed and I'm claiming that it's 50 meters per second, okay? So you are supposed to um, make an estimate of this claim, whether, that whether this claim is right or not. How you are going to do that? You can come up with any way possible. There can be more than one ways to just get an estimate, like whether this statement makes sense or not. So how you think you can do that? Yes. Convert it to kilometers per hour. Okay. Which is the speed, which, would, which is the speed of a car, for example. And if you convert, I think it will be around 180 kilometers per hour. And a car doesn't go that fast on the freeway. So. Even car doesn't go. Let me just take your words and you did that, and it's 180 kilometers per hour. 180 kilometers. 
per hour since we are in the US they like uh, speeds in miles so you divide this by 1.6 and you get like still get like uh, more than 100 miles per, per hour that's a lot of speed and that is in the case of car okay I'm claiming that I rode my bike at this speed <coughs> I mean, I assume by bike that they mean a bicycle or whatever, that's usually what we do. So this is one way. So you can immediately say that this is not correct statement. This is wrong. I thought of it in another way. So this is one answer. As I said, there is no unique answer. Since everyone is trying to make an estimate, you can come up with your own answer, which means you can come up with your own reason to gauge whether this statement is right or wrong. So what I did, I just assumed a few more values like as students, let's say I live one mile from the campus. Okay. So I'm taking the distance to be one mile. This is what I'm assuming. My home is like 1.23 miles from here, but I'm going to take one mile. So this is where I live and uh, I have the speed. So I can calculate that time, like how much it would take me to get to campus on my bike. And the simplest formula to get the time is I divide total uh, distance that I cover divided by the speed that I have. And I said that let's say the distance to my home is like one mile and uh, the speed is 50 meters per second. Uh, I can convert miles into meters and they are roughly 1600 meters. Uh, one mile is 1.6 kilometers and one kilometer has 1000 meters in it. So it's like 1600 meters. Okay. And speed is 50 uh, meters per second. Meters goes away, one zero goes away and if you divide 160 by 5 this gives you 32 seconds. So now you have a time and this is I believe another better way to uh, guess like whether can you get to campus traveling one mile in just 32 seconds is it possible it's, it's just too small a time to cover one mile even on car so um, this statement is not correct that's how you do it this is like the first thing that they teach you um, in sciences especially mathematical sciences like physics uh, in which they like the, the maybe the purpose of this kind of questions are like to train your mind like how you're going to think how you're going to reason and argue Anyway, so um, I'm gonna skip the third one for you. Let's go to the fourth one. And it's uh, again me claiming some statement, I can throw a ball at a distance of two kilometers. Can any one of you do that? Can you just throw a ball at a distance of two kilometers? Just with a gun, maybe. With a gun, maybe. Uh, even, <laughs> even guns, maybe. No, they can't. <laughs> they, they can't. I mean, uh, the speeding bullet uh, from a rifle has a speed of like 1600 meters per second. And that's a speeding bullet, which means that immediately after it uh, leaves the muzzle, that's a muzzle speed, right? So uh, this statement is not, it doesn't make sense. And then the uh, fifth one is, I can throw a ball at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Can you do that? Now, so let's, let's convert this. So this is a uh, speed. 50 can uh, have somebody converted it uh, into meters per second so how do you convert it into meters per second you substitute kilometers for meters so 50 is a number stays same than one kilometer has 1000 meters in it and one hour has 3600 seconds in it and this uh, two zeros goes away and this gives us 500 divided by 36, 36 times 10 is 360 and we can add 4, so it's like 14 meters approximately since we are not using any calculator or anything else, so let's say this is 14 meters per second. Now what do you say, you told me that it's possible, now what do you say about this one? Can you throw something at this speed? Of course you can do that, that's like 14 meters, maybe it's like the end of uh, that room maybe a little bit far, but you can throw that. Okay, so this is possible, this is doable, you can throw that. Since you are throwing like at full energy, it, it, it can cover 14 meters in one second. So this statement is true. So you see, you not only you have to like come up with an answer, 
you, you also have to come up with a kind of a statement, a reason that why it's true and false. Um, Six one is bizarre. Uh, Jones newborn baby has a mass of 33 kilograms. Okay, you know uh, the anyone knows about like the healthy baby's weight at birth? 3.5. Yeah, 3.5 kilograms. It's around seven pounds. Yeah. Okay, that's like the healthy baby. If the baby is fully healthy, no issues. It's like seven pounds. Okay. So 33 kilograms is bizarre. It's, it's, you see, it's just like general knowledge, like the things that you see around, you never question. Like we see babies being born around us, we never question like, okay, what's the weight of like, what's the average weight or what's the weight of a healthy baby? So this is these kind of questions. The seventh one is a typical hummingbird has a mass of 3.3 grams. Uh, you have seen hummingbirds, right? They're small, pretty small, very small. Okay, um, I thought 3.3 grams is still too low to be the weight of a bird. But uh, somebody in my other class actually did uh, Google search and the weight was between 2 to 22 grams. Okay. So in that case it's possible. I'm still, I haven't checked it, I'm still you know, kind of confused believing this because 3.3 gram is just too small a weight to have like, to have a bird of this weight. Yeah, maybe I'm mistaken about uh, having birds then. So this was a fun part where with the kind of questions which teach you how to think, how to reason. Okay, so now we are going uh, towards the interesting part and uh, this uh, uh, second question, it asks you about um, plotting graphs. And uh, this is like the first real serious topic that uh, you study in this course. So let me give you a brief review first about like what these graphs tell you and how we plot them and then we can go and try to answer uh, these questions. So a graph is a relationship between two physical quantities. If we just consider the examples of this first problem that we have just talked about, uh, this problem gave us certain uh, things. For example, it claimed that I can throw a ball at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Okay, so this quantity, it's a speed and it is measured against something which is time so you see it's like speed is 50 kilometer per hour or 14 meters per second so a graph is it's like a representation which tells you graphically uh, how one thing is related to another thing and the way we uh, plot them we define two axes the vertical one and the horizontal one and where these axes coincide, we call them the origin. This means that whatever we are going to uh, plot on x-axis and the y-axis, their values are zero at this point. So uh, this is x-axis, this is y-axis, and we plot real quantities on these axes. What do I mean by real quantities? For example, in that uh, part, we talked about that I can throw a ball at a speed of 14 meters per second. So that speed is a real quantity. Okay, we run, we walk, we have some speed. So that's something that you can measure. Yeah. But uh, how fast someone can uh, run or throw a ball, that changes with regard to time. If, you, if I can throw a ball at a speed of 14 meters per second, Maybe someone of you can throw a ball at a speed of 28 meters per second. Okay, so this these graphs, they kind of represent such kind of relationship, like how fast one thing is changing compared to another thing. And those things that I'm talking about, like that speed, time, these are the quantities that we plot on these axes. So in mathematics, they are just called y-axis and the x-axis, but when you, uh, talk physics and talk about physical quantities, then these axes represent real quantities. For example, if I plot velocity on the y-axis, time on the x-axis, then this graph will be called a velocity time graph. Okay, so uh, we then we have some relationship between velocity and time. For example, this line, it represents how velocity of an object changes as the time starts from zero onward. So if we move along this line, time starts at zero and it increases towards right. Similarly, as we go up, velocity or speed of the object, it starts at zero and it increases upward. 
So if you look at this line, which represents the relationship between speed and time, you can see that at this point, since this line is going upward, it means that speed is increasing as the object is moving in this direction. And at this point, speed is maximum. And this speed is maximum corresponds to this time. So this much time has passed since the object had started its motion. And at this point, its speed is maximum. So what happens after this point, we see that this line goes down and which means that now we have this much distance uh, uh, from this axis, from below this is speed axis and so speed is decreasing. At this point, it goes to a minimum value and then it starts increasing again and reaches another maximum value at this point. So this is the kind of relationship which, which tell you that how uh, speed of an object is changing. You can see, uh, say that, that let's say it's, it's a certain boy and it's, uh, he's running initially, it stops at this point, starts running in the backward direction, stops at this point and then again starts running in uh, certain initial direction. It's like, let's say it's me and I'm initially running towards the bell tower. So this part, it represents, let's say here is the bell tower. So here we have bell tower and I start from this point, this classroom. Okay, so till this point, let's say it's some point, um, let's say this is uh, some point close to coffee beans. Okay, so this tells me that I start from, start running from this room, I go to the coffee bean, I stop there and walk back. Let's say I come back from coffee bean. And then uh, at this point, let's say this point is out of this building, I come to that point, then I start moving again towards bell tower and eventually I go to the bell tower. So these lines represent these kind of relationships. So, okay. so, uh, so in this case, since time uh, changes, as time changes, you can see that my speed changes at each point, which means that the line is curved. So what happens if I have a straight line like this? What kind of motion this line represents? It's a constant speed. What's the value of that constant speed? Whatever number we have, let's say it's 30 uh, meters per second on the y-axis. It just means that since time is passing along uh, this axis, so a, a line parallel to the time axis represents constant speed. So this is one example of graph. This is called velocity time graph or speed time graph or VT graph. You can plot any quantities. Let's say I plot uh, position on um, vertical axis and time on horizontal axis. So in this case, this gives me position time graph. Position of the object from certain reference point. Let's say this uh, from this room. And uh, there's one uh, more point uh, that quantity in mathematics is called slope. And it's defined as, uh, if you just want to remember it, it's like rise over run. Rise mean how much from this point you go up how much you rise and run means how much you move along this axis. So this axis has time, the y axis, rise axis has velocity and so this would be final velocity minus initial velocity divided by final time minus initial time. So this is um, the mathematical formula for slope. But what does it represent in physics, the thing that we are studying? So we have to see what we have on the vertical axis. And in the first case, we had speed on the vertical axis. So this numerator is speed, denominator is time. And in physics, this thing is called acceleration. Acceleration tells you how fast an object is moving with respect to time. By fast, I mean it can change its speed. It can fasten up, it can speed up, it can slow down. But fast is a general a statement that it can slow down, it can uh, speed up or whatever. Okay, so this represents um, acceleration. What if I had x on vertical axis? In that case, uh, this would uh, give me xf minus xi divided by tf minus ti. And this thing is called uh, speed. Okay, so uh, these are, so you find a new quantity when you take the ratio of the two quantities that you have plotted on this uh, graph. And this is all the information that we need to solve this problem.
the second problem. It has a, a, a lot of parts. So let's go through them. Let's uh, quickly <coughs> solve this graph, this line, straight line. And let's say it's on a VT graph. So if I take two points on this line, let's say this is my first point. This corresponds to velocity VI and it corresponds to time, some time TI. Let's say this is uh, the time it corresponds to TI. Then the second point I take here, and this corresponds to time TF and velocity uh, VF. So on a straight line, someone just told me that speed remains the same. It means that whatever value VF has is equal to whatever value VI has. And in that case, this numerator, it becomes zero because they are equal. And which means your acceleration is zero. So we get a conclusion that if speed of an object is a constant, acceleration is zero. But if his object is not moving at all, if it's at rest, like me, what about my acceleration in this case? If I'm not moving at all, in that case, object was moving with some non-zero speed corresponds to, let's say, 30 meters per second. Now I ask the question, if I am at rest, I'm not moving at all. In this case, my speed is zero. Initial zero, final zero. What about acceleration? Zero. Okay, so you get zero acceleration for two different conditions and that's kind of important. If an object is moving with a constant speed or the object is at rest, acceleration is zero in both cases. And so if you are given the acceleration, you cannot tell whether the object is moving or it is at rest. Be careful about that point. Now we can uh, solve these problems. And the first one is a car accelerates forward from a stop sign. It eventually reaches a steady speed of 45 meters per second. We are supposed to uh, plot a graph like this. And uh, let's do it. So since uh, it moves at a steady speed, which means constant speed of 45 uh, miles per hour. So uh, we need to draw a graph which represents time on x-axis, speed on y-axis, and since eventually it reaches a speed of 45 miles per hour, let's say on the speed axis, this point corresponds to 45 miles per hour, mph. Okay? So how the graph would be? What kind of graph do you expect? It would be like... Yes. It would be like a curve until it reaches yes. 45 miles per hour. So this statement has two parts. The first part is car starts from rest, which means initially it was stopped, which means its speed was zero. Okay. So there's one thing clear that when we try to plot a graph for this motion, the initial speed, it starts from zero. It starts from this point. Okay. Initial speed is zero. And then it slowly uh, reaches a speed of 45 miles per hour, which I have uh, drawn this dotted line. And let's say as time goes on, at this point in time, the car eventually reaches a speed of 45 miles, and after that it moves at constant speed of 45 miles. So this would be the second half of the motion, this red line. The first half of the motion, you can plot it like this, you can plot a straight line here, that's fine, but since it starts from rest and then get some uniform speed, the plot should be little curve in the end. But generally, you can just draw a straight line. So this would be the plot of uh, graph of this car's motion. It starts from rest, zero, and then it slowly speeds up up to 45 miles per hour, and after that, it goes at uniform speed of 45 miles per hour. Okay. Um, uh, so question two, an elevator starts from rest at the 100th floor of the Empire State Building and descends uh, with no stops until coming to rest on the ground floor. Draw this one vertically since the motion is vertical. Forget <coughs> about vertical, let's draw like this one. Can someone tell me uh, how it, we will just transform it? How we can plot a graph like this of an elevator? Anyone been to Empire State Building in the elevator? No. No one? But we still have the luxury of riding our elevators in the university. It's the same thing, but just that 
they are not 100 um, story up. So they are like three stories. That's fine. So from based on your observation, when you ride an elevator, how do you feel? It starts motion and then does the speed change after a certain time or not? Yes. It's, it's just the observation. Okay, it starts and then it gets to some constant speed and then it descends with that constant speed. That's the basic principle. So the graph should be like this. Okay. But there's one uh, subtlety in that and that is uh, it, it comes down, it descends. Okay, so the speed or velocity in this case, you have to be careful about the direction of it. So in this case, we are taking the positive values of speed upward. Okay, this is a positive y-axis. You can similarly draw a negative y-axis in downward direction. Okay, so in this case, your elevator starts from zero speed and it uh, gets some non-zero speed in the end, so our graph in this case should be something like that. Um, not like that, like this. And at this point, it gets to some constant speed. And this constant speed, it let's say it's um, five meters per second. I'm gonna put a negative sign so that uh, it tells you. This is very important. This tells you in which direction the motion is happening. Okay, if the if you go up from the ground level, and you can define that as positive direction of motion. Similarly, if the elevator comes down, that will be then the negative direction of motion, and you have to be careful about these lines. I mean, you can simply invert it, and it will become the red line. You can just say that my negative values of speed are in this direction, and that's fine. We are close. Uh, let's go to uh, fourth question. A space shuttle orbits the Earth in a circular orbit, completing one revolution in 90 minutes. What kind of graph do you expect for this one? Do they change speed when they orbit Earth, the space shuttle? They move at a constant speed. So with the constant speed, what kind of graph you expect? This initial black line, this line, okay? But on this axis, it will not be 30 meters per second. It would be uh, <coughs> seven, eight kilometers per hour, something like that. But that can be anything, okay? But the graph would be this straight line. They just go round and round at constant speed, okay? That's what they do. Um, I'll leave the fifth one for you. It's a harder one, so think about it. Yeah, it's... Um, let's go to the uh, last exercise, uh, this one. This is important. This relates velocity and acceleration. So we need this expression. So I'm gonna erase out this thing, this one. Okay, so we are given velocity time graphs, three velocity time graphs, and then we have just coordinate axis below it. And we are asked to plot acceleration time graphs. Okay, for each motion, each velocity time graph, you are supposed to plot acceleration time graph. Okay, and this is uh, the relation between velocity and acceleration. And this relation, how did we get this relation? We got this relation from this graph in which we plotted speed or velocity on the vertical axis and um, time on the horizontal axis. And then we were like, okay, mathematically, we have this formula for slope. And when we map this formula to physics, it gives us some physical quantity. And on velocity or speed time graph, it gives us acceleration. And this problem is purely related to acceleration and velocity. So uh, let me uh, draw the first one. The second and third one, they are alike. So we'll do only two. And this is velocity time. Vx, it goes like this. And then it goes up. Like this. Okay, this is velocity time graph. How uh, the acceleration time graph will look? No, it's called acceleration time. So, by the way, one question. Just I'm um, I'm stating this question in passing for you. In all the plots, you might have noticed uh, that I have graphs that I have drawn here. 
why the graph always move towards this direction? Why did I not plot a graph something like, let's say it's velocity time, and it's like this? Just think about this question. Because the x-axis is kind okay. and it always... This is... <laughs> This is, this is something so fundamental, so beautiful, which tells you something about the world around you. You see, time always moves forward. The moment that has gone, you can't get that back. That's undoable thing in our world. And that's why all the graphs that you draw, they change along the vertical axis, but along the horizontal axis on which you have taken time, they just keep moving forward, like towards right direction. And that has a special reason because you can't turn the time back. You can't just do it. We are constrained by this condition in this world. And that's why all the graphs, they just move forward. They change. Like in vertical direction where I had plotted speed, you can go up and down, but not along the time axis. You can come back in time axis like this one. This is not allowed. Anyway, so uh, this, is, this is the graph of velocity. Okay? And we have seen here that if velocity, uh, if uh, on a velocity time graph, you have a straight line parallel to time axis, acceleration is zero. So if you try to plot an acceleration time graph, this part, its velocity is zero, so acceleration is gonna be zero at this part, so this is gonna be acceleration in this region, okay? And then, in this region, again, velocity is constant. And I told you that if the object is at rest or it's moving with constant speed, acceleration is gonna be zero. Object in this region was at rest, corresponding acceleration, zero. Object was moving with some constant speed, some non-zero speed. Again, the acceleration was zero. And in this region, you see that it moves, uh, it, its velocity increases from zero to some finite value. And uh, that increases if it's, if it's a straight line, which means it is increasing uniformly. Let's say it increases one meter in each second, every second. And so in that case, acceleration should be constant. And since it's going from zero to some positive value, final velocity is positive. Initial velocity was zero. So this numerator is positive, which means acceleration is positive. And which means that some non-zero acceleration like this. So this will be your acceleration time graph. Zero, non-zero value, zero again. Um, if you look at the second one, uh, let me use different color on the same uh, graph. And if you look at this one, it's uh, like this. The velocity time graph goes like this. Okay, I'm gonna use the green one for this. Straight line, velocity time graph on time axis, this represents a zero acceleration. So the green one in this region is gonna be zero acceleration. So this part has zero acceleration. This part from here to here, you tell me what should be the acceleration be, and this is again straight line, this is gonna be zero, so starting from this part, it's zero again. In this region, what will be the value of acceleration? Negative. Negative. This is not positive in this case, why? Object is moving in this direction, so you take two point, first point, second point. First point has higher value, greater value on the y-axis than this second point. Okay, so Vf has lower value than Vi. Acceleration will be negative, and so you will mark a line below this zero axis, and it should be something like this. And in this case, your graph will be this. You see, both graphs are same. Just the difference that in, in one case the acceleration is positive, in the other case the acceleration is negative. Um, I have taken all of your time. Uh, do you have questions? Now, okay.